My name is Monica Gleberman, and you're listening to Silence on Set Podcast. On today's podcast, we're talking to the cast of Spoiler Alert, which is a film based off of a memoir from Michael Osiello. The film follows the final 11-month period of a Manhattan photographer, Kate Cohen, from his diagnosis with terminal cancer to his death through the eyes of his partner, 14 years, and later spouse, Michael Osiello. So to talk about the film and start us off, here's Ben Aldridge, who plays Kate Cohen. What is the premise of Spoiler Alert? It's a love story. It's about two guys meeting uh, in the early noughts, as you guys call it. We call it the noughties in the UK. Um, And it really is just uh, chronicling their relationship, um, them getting to know each other, the things that any relationship goes through in terms of being being tested and finding out how you fit together and uh, those awkward moments, those moments of growth. And then, um, then Kit is diagnosed with cancer and that obviously has a huge impact on their relationship. Tell us a bit about your character, Kit Cohen. At the beginning of the film, I think Kit um, is is kind of that that mid twenties, kind of not quite, kind of knowing what you want to do, but not quite there yet. He's got a, a day job, which is like a bit creative, but working for Kosi, doing their signage. He isn't making a living from his art, which like so many artists don't get an opportunity to do. So I think he's got a little bit of like awkwardness and embarrassment about that. Um, And in terms of like relationships, I think he's like out on the town, he's on the apps. He hasn't had a significant relationship up to that point. And yeah, meeting meeting Michael is kind of uh, a real shift for him in his life, I think. What do you think of Michael and Kit's relationship? I think they develop this relationship, just as we all do, that they find real common ground and real safety in being understood and being seen by someone else. And I think they are a little eccentric um, and a little, I hate this word, quirky, but they're a little, yeah. Um, And I think they have this real shared sense of humour and naughtiness and cheekiness. Um, And I think they kind of show each other in their own ways how to relax a little more. I think they're both slightly tightly, tightly wound on different subjects, but I think they help each other in that way. Um, I think they're both quite neurotic but about different things and they kind of like relax each other, I would say, and make a good team. What was it like to work with Jim Parsons? I just felt so lucky to be working with Jim and Jim cares for this film and the script and this story so much and it has such passion for for it for for uh telling the story authentically and for playing michael authentically and also just a real desire to connect to it in a way that we understood it as actors i've never felt anyone believe in me as much as i felt jim believed in me what were the major themes of the film the major theme is just love for me that's the that's the takeaway um, I think this film will inspire people to love better. That's what I wrote to Michael Osiello after I read the book. And I think, um, luckily, that translates to the film as well. How do you think this film will influence the LGBTQIA plus community? I think it is an important LGBTQ plus story. I, I don't know. I think all uh, LGBTQ plus stories are important um, for us at the moment. I think like... I personally think representation has the power to change the world. Um, You know, now more than ever, we are consumers of TV and film. That's, you know, we learned that so much during the pandemic. Um, And there is so much being made. And I think that uh, either watching about a story that you don't know about, well, that can make you more compassionate and give you more understanding and uh, give you an insight into someone's life that you wouldn't otherwise have had. And I think also it gives a a community of people a chance to learn about themselves as well and see yourself reflected back. And I think that's really important to, I think we're all on a quest in life to be, to feel like we belong somewhere and to be understood and to be seen. And I think that um, representation in uh, in film and TV has the, the power to do that. Next up, we have the author of the memoir, Michael Osiello, as well as Jim Parsons, who plays him in the film and is also the producer of the film, to talk about their characters and what it was like working together. What was it like to work with Jim Parsons? 
Jim and I knew each other, have known each other for a while. Professionally, um, I've been you know interviewing him on red carpets and sometimes he'd come into the studio and I'd, I'd do interviews with him. And instantly we, we had a, a, a rapport. Um, and I think that's because we have a shared sensibility uh, in terms of not taking anything too seriously. Uh, and I think that's what, what I connected with Jim about was he was, it was just fun to be around him. There was no pretense. Tell us a bit about the character of Michael. Movie Michael has, there's a maybe more of an outward sort of sweetness and vulnerability to him. Uh, I think I, I, I'm more of like, I think in a protective shell a lot. Uh, so I don't let people see, you know, you know, vulnerability, um, even like sweetness, uh, anger, any kind of like I'm I'm very controlled with my emotions. Movie Michael, I think, doesn't have maybe as many hang-ups in that department. Yeah, is that fair? I think that's very fair. I think that's a combination of me being me as a, an actor, but also the movie we put together. I guess called for that. And this was like, in my mind, I never was like, whoever plays me, it has to be an imitation. Like, especially right. when we got Jim, I think one of the exciting things was I couldn't wait to see what he brought to this role that surprised me and that was interesting. Um, and, and I knew that this, he would create his own Michael and he did. What did you think of Ben Aldridge and his performance as Kit? For me, it's, how physically he resembled <laughs> Kit, uh, which was, which was um, a little weird at times, but in the best possible way. Uh, you know, there's certain angles of Ben where I looked at him and it was like, I saw Kit in, in him and then also in his performance and in, in his mannerisms in um, his approach to, to certain lines and um, just an overall essence. Like he, he was very, and is in many ways, very Kit-like. Yeah, it's funny. I never met Kit in person. It's because he, he, like, he wasn't a fan. Because he wasn't a fan. <laughs> I kept you guys apart as far as possible. <laughs> well, whatever the cruel reason, I never met Kit as, as in real life. But picture-wise, and your very vivid descriptions in the book about what he's like, there was, everybody could see the overlap. And like, I think that Ben and Kit have more in common on the superficial level that we were talking about in some ways. And, and I guess related to that for me, there was so much kindness and charisma in what he did. It was, it felt easy to, to join forces with him. What did it mean to you to see your memoir come to life on screen? It was emotional uh, at times, but not because I felt like I was being taken back to painful parts of my life and now it's being relived in front of me. Um, it was because the work being done was just so good. I was just so in the moment and enjoying these performances and um, and just as a as a viewer, as a someone who was just watching this experience unfold before me, I was moved by it. And sometimes, you know, there was difficult scenes being shot and I was moved by those, but it wasn't never like, oh, this is really tough going back here. Right. It wasn't like we were shooting a documentary, um, but it was watching like th these incredible artists um, play out these scenes and some of them were emotionally wrenching to watch. What did it mean to have Jim Parsons attached to the project and step in to play you, Michael Osiello? The first time I saw Jim playing me, it, it was surreal. It, you know, it was like, I can't believe this is happening. I'm sitting here looking into a monitor watching Jim Parsons, you know, play the story of my life. Um, it, it was, uh, honestly, I felt just, gratitude. I felt like I, I'm so grateful to have gotten to this point and to be able to 
share this story with um, so many more people um, and to have someone like Jim starring in it. It just was like, it, it, it was um, an embarrassment of riches. That's very sweet to say. I'm realizing I've never allowed myself to fully imagine what it would be like to be doing what he did. I think that I, I think that's one of those, there's a few little things like this that I think I made sure to stop myself from doing for fear that it would somehow affect or inhibit what I was doing. You know what I mean? Like trying to put myself in Michael's shoes I mean, I was trying to put myself in Michael's shoes for a major chunk of his life he had written down. Um, I don't think I could have, and I'm still realizing I haven't yet really thought about what it's like to put myself in his shoes for going through this experience. Um, and as I'm thinking about it, I understand why. It's enormous. It's enormous watching your life reflected back at you. And finally, here's Bill Irwin, who plays Bob, and he talks about what it was like being in the film and working with Jim Parsons. What is the main story behind Spoiler Alert? It's a story about people's daily lives hit with big, big events. Cancer diagnosis, um, breakup, marriage, realizing the person I'm in love with is somebody I can't live with right now realizing I have to live with the person I love because uh, we have so little time left. Big, big realizations in a sort of normal day-to-day -day life. What is Bob's relationship with Kit like? Perhaps Bob has not taken the time or made the leap to ask Kit about himself. So there's a wonderful scene in front of Kirby, the roommate, where uh, Ben, Kit, come out to, to his parents. And the coming out uh, for young men uh, is, is a huge, or not, uh, chapter threshold in life. But the wonderful way that uh, Showalter handled it was that it was a surprise, lots of revelation, and then, well, good, that's over. Nice to meet you, Michael. So now you're my son's boyfriend. Okay. What was working with Jim Parsons like? So when I met him, I was not surprised that he's a beautiful Chekhovian actor. I wasn't surprised, but I did kind of have to register, wow, he's like a triple, he's like a football player who can kick, throw, run, and catch, you know, uh, and block. And uh, so watching Jim Parsons' genius from that point of view, from a fellow actor's point of view, is really a rich gift. How important are the LGBTQIA plus stories, especially today? It's important to tell LGBTQ plus stories because they've been denied. I mean, I like to think that in my son's lifetime, it'll be so much a part of the normal fabric of life that the stories need to be told, but they don't need to be told maybe with the urgency that they do right today because they've been denied for most of my life somebody was born in the middle of the previous century, the stories of a huge number of my neighbors, friends, fellow citizens has been denied. So important to tell them now. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to the cast of Spoiler Alert talk about their experience in the film. The film is currently available now in your local theater, so make sure you go buy a ticket and check it out. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you're updated on all of our latest podcasts. And head over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, so you're updated on all of our video content. <laughs>